Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. I am your cast for the match Crit Chronic War Catalyst. This is week 12 and we will be having a match between Kabam on the blue side. Kabam of course uh, develops and publishes massively multiplayer uh, social games. They're a huge company in that field and I would be surprised if you haven't played one of their games. And they are playing against on the red side Team LinkedIn which uh, LinkedIn is a, like a social media network for your job, which is actually really cool, a new, uh, a very modern thinking uh, company there. So fantastic companies here playing against each other today, and they are both playing for the charity Child's Play. Child's Play brings children in hospitals and domestic abuse centers the joy of gaming to help them sort of reconnect with their childhood again and uh, get back to you know, being a kid, being able to enjoy their time as a kid, but without any further ado, let's get into the picks and bands of things here. We do see, of course, the anti band coming out from the red side. That is, of course, a targeted band here uh, against the uh, Boater. I'm really terrible with these names, but uh, that anti coming out is not something that we are unused to seeing. <laughs> so, definitely a targeted band. They're wanting to kick that right out from under that, as well as the Cassidy ban, of course, going to be targeted there, but possibly just a uh, knee-jerk response to seeing that LeBlanc ban. Uh, not totally uncommon uh, to ban out the Cassidy uh, if you can't blow him up with LeBlanc. Uh, I've seen many a Cassidy be picked into a LeBlanc as sort of a counter pick with that shield, but the LeBlanc burst a little bit too much for Cassidy in the early stages, so... We will, of course, see how all of this plays out if my friends will stop messaging me on <laughs> this site. Uh, so we do see, of course, that Nautilus being first picked. That is a uh, very contested pick nowadays, but it was also uh, just a standard pick here uh, for this red team. Uh, we have seen that Nautilus coming out in the jungle uh, even before the recent changes that has made Nautilus a very standard support nowadays. But most importantly, we do see the Aurelia being picked up on the red side. Again, a very comfort pick champion here uh, for Kapuski in the top lane. Though, it uh, looks like we're going to see Trundle coming out as well in the jungle. Uh, more standard jungler here on the blue side in Sejuani. But it will be nice to see that Trundle coming out here. Uh, laying down the, the raising up those spikes slowing people really great gank potential especially in that top lane if you can uh, Get that started off with that Aurelius stun make sure they land that slow Gonna be a very devastating gank here just beating somebody down in the top lane It looks like it will be the Maokai coming out in the top lane the passive heal on the patch that just came out today I believe uh, Passive heal on Maokai was reduced slightly uh, not not a huge, but this is a noticeable amount um, in the early stages of the game. So uh, we will see how well this Maokai uh, is used to those changes already. Perhaps they've gotten in a few practice games before the start of the day. Uh, before the start of this match, I should say, early on in the day. To get used to those changes in the early stages figure out how to navigate those new sustain ratios and of course we are seeing uh, the uh, Karthus coming out in the mid lane here. Definitely great to see that uh, with the team that was leaning a little bit um, towards this engage on, on you composition here with that Sivir, with that Sejuan, with that Nautilus. They're going to look to pile on to the red side team as quickly as possible here. And Karthus Especially when sped up by the Sivir ultimate, plays into that very well. Karthus just loves to get right in the middle of team fights. Uh, preferably not die, but even if he does die, of course he does have that passive uh, to just last through that team fight. And of course, we're seeing the champions getting swapped around here to their proper lanes. And it looks like the final pick uh, for this red side is going to be that Syndra in the middle lane. Uh, Syndra fallen out of uh, flavor, uh, favor, I should say, uh, recently, but still, of course, a very strong pick. I 
been mostly playing Earth mode myself lately, so I'm used to seeing those uh, 18 balls getting ulted into you. <laughs> Won't be quite as devastating here now in a normals game, but definitely still a force to be reckoned with, especially with the Loon Zeko uh, now active again. Gonna be able to really get a lot of burst damage. Uh, when you can get that stun, slam the ball on top of him, and then get that ultimate thrown all at him. So, looking a little bit at the summoner spells here, we do see fairly typical summoner spells coming out here. With that Syndra, of course, that's going to mean Karthus is going to be taking that exhaust. Uh, hopefully, he'll be able to slam down that exhaust on Syndra whenever he sees her about to throw out her ultimate. Give him a little less concerns throughout the laning phase, which, of course... Uh, Karthus being fairly weak in the early game is going to need as much help there as possible to try and survive. Trundle, uh, not the strongest uh, ganker. Uh, if he doesn't land that pillar, he's going to have some troubles catching Karthus in that very short middle lane. Uh, but of course, that is why you have a Syndra who can set up those ganks, especially uh, if she does knock Karthus towards the Trundle as well. Definitely going to be a very devastating moment for Karthus there. So uh, that or that exhaust, I should say, is going to be very critical to surviving any of those ganks early on. And we do see, uh, just looking at the compositions a little bit more for the red side, it looks like there's largely going to be uh, only Leona for the engage here. There's of course. Some soft engage here with the pillar from Trundle, with the Aurelia just being able to dive in and start a fight whenever she feels like it. Uh, but Leona is going to be the primary sense of source of engage here, so landing those ultimates uh, from Leona and actually being able to get a Zenith Blade onto somebody who's a very good target to stun out is going to be the primary source to start off fights here for this red side. Warding, of course, going to be very key for that. Uh, we might see. Uh, some death brushes coming out from this red side. Blue side seems more likely to uh, just want to find a pick and just go <laughs> as soon as they do, um, or as soon as they're starting to group for a team fight and they feel like they're in even the slightest advantageous position to just hit that uh, Sivir ultimate and just charge right in. Uh, red side's going to have to be a little bit more tactical than that, but certainly does make up for uh, that with a lot of damage. Aurelia, definitely nothing to sneeze at. Graves, of course, very strong, especially in the early game. Going to be quite a bit of a lane bully here, though. He is paired up against Sivir, who is equally a lane bully herself. So we'll be uh, paying close attention to that bottom lane to see uh, which side gets a little bit of an edge early. Possible early level 2 could spell disaster. Uh, for one side or the other in that bottom lane as of course Nautilus and Leona both have very strong engagement tools in that bottom lane so we'll see as we get loaded into the game here uh, what are going to be the uh, starts here for both sides if there's going to be any invade shenanigans going into this game or if we're going to see just some standard clean starts here with the line of scrimmage Of course we have that beautiful uh, background art now with this new patch looking very snazzy making these load screens just a little bit more beautiful. It is of course uh, noteworthy as well that Syndra, where is she on here, did take a good night uh, for this middle lane. Fairly standard on Syndra's to be able to secure those early kills and uh, definitely going to be a uh, champion in Karthus that can be killed <laughs> early on so we'll see if that Syndra uh, opts to take a little bit of a slower approach to the game and try and get a uh, very sneaky six off uh, onto that Karthus and get that ultimate and combine her uh, ignite with that ultimate to try and get the kill at six or if she can force some uh, damage onto him early poke him out a little bit and then get a sneaky ultimate, or before her ultimate, get a sneaky ignite on him. 
uh, and pick up an early kill to get herself going early on. It looks like the blue side will be grouping all together and heading over to this tri-brush tri area as they pinged out on the map. Fairly standard items uh, for everybody so far. Karthus, of course, taking that flask for a little extra sustain to try and survive that Syndra poke early on to prevent that exact scenario we were just discussing of uh, Sneaky Ignite coming out a little bit early. Looks like the blue side is just waiting to see if uh, the red team's gonna peek a little bit. Syndra is peeking a little bit here, but unfortunately they were not in that brush prepared for her, and that is gonna be the ward spotting out the most of the entire team here, yeah. That I believe they will know right now, yeah, they will be able to spot out that the whole team is there. Aurelia unfortunately already threw down her ward, I believe. No, she did not. Uh, would be a good chance for that Aurelia to try and go get a deep reward in that uh, blue area. Around the blue buff of blue side's jungle, I should say. Uh, but gonna opt to just play it safe. Hang out in her tri bush. Make sure nothing crazy goes down. It uh, looks like it's going to be fairly standard starts here from both sides. Bot lanes doing their thing. Not even going to start Krugs here on the bottom side. And probably just a good leash going over to this trundle here. Onto the ground. Yeah, it looks like all that XP will be handed over to the trundle. As we see mirrored jungle starts here, going over to their respective blue buffs. Looks like overall fairly equal starts here in the bottom lane. A little bit of an advantage towards that Sivir. But not quite able to get to that level to just get it. Leona. Getting a little confident there, walking up, just throwing down a point blank stun onto that Nautilus. Of course, Nautilus, with his uh, passive ability to root people with those auto attacks, going to be able to return that CC even without using an ability, as we see a lot of uh, slugfest here going back and forth in the top lane. Of course, full sustain starts from both sides here, so those exchanges, while looking a little devastating early on, are not going to be too much of concern here. Really, you're just going to chug through those flask charges, pop those potions, and be alright. Not too much level 2 action coming out from the bottom lane. As we see, Sivir's starting to run a little low on mana from trying to shove that wave out a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, she hasn't been able to deny too much CS by getting that into the tower, but we'll see uh, with this wave if she's able to push that in. As we see in the top lane, the exact same scenario here. The wave now crashing into the tower, possibly going to deny some uh, last hits from that Aurelia. Oh, the hook just barely missing on that Nautilus. Really, of course, using those dashes to finish that off. Karthus getting stunned up. You're going to take a little bit of damage from that Syndra. Again, with the full sustain start from him as well with that flask, going to be able to be just fine. Still has some health pots as well. We see really getting aggressive again here in the top lane. And the roots coming out from that Nautilus. Getting a fair bit of exchanges back and forth here as we see Trundle coming up into that top lane here. Gonna be able to take a good bite out of uh, this Maokai. The pillar does not land but does get the slow and that will be the first blood going over to that Aurelia in the top lane. And great hook by the Nautilus. The heal gonna save Leona though. And Sivir needs to be careful. She is taking those Caster minion aggros. And with Leona diving in, that's going to be enough. Nautilus wants the kill on the Leona. He will flash for it to get the last auto, but that's going to cost him his life here. As Graves surely not going to let this Nautilus get out of here. Unfortunately, that is a warded brush here. Nautilus trying to get in the minion line to try and draw as much aggro onto him as possible. And taking a lot of damage is that Graves, but he is going to be able to make it out of there 
just fine. And pick up a uh, kill from himself as well in that bottom lane. We see Trundle being chased out of the jungle here with Sejuani. Asserting her dominance here. See Maokai already feeling the effects of that early kill, that first blood onto Aurelia. Uh, didn't quite have enough money to complete that fade, but already able to chunk out that Maokai who only was able to pick up uh, a single ruby crystal. Hopefully they'll be able to turn that around here as Sejuani's coming in with the gank and the ultimate from Karthus as well. No, Lydia, or excuse me, Aurelia is still able to pick up the kill before Sejuani gets the return kill. Overall, that is a little bit worth for the blue side, uh, as they did get the two extra assists on that, but taking uh, a lot of time from Sejuani, taking the Karthus ultimate as well, and only getting a one for one, not what you want to see here if you are the blue side. Trundle gonna have uh, that denied, I do believe. No, that did go over to the red side, but the slow from Karthus gonna prevent too much from out of there, but the flash gonna be enough to get in range the pillar not gonna be able to create enough distance and it actually is Karthus with the lay waste gonna be picking up the kill there and great hook onto that Leona unfortunately for her she was hatching a ward there as she went to throw down her ward herself as well does not have any uh, sustain left aside from those charges of the relic shield to get herself a little passive healing. We'll see if she's able to get some of those uh, melee minions in the next wave here. Aurelia is still getting aggressive onto that Maokai. She knows that none of those kills have gone onto him. And it's just been uh, onto that Sejuani. And she has that completed phage now. Gonna be able to out-trade that Maokai quite a bit. So we see some wards being cleared out here in the bottom lane as the junglers fight again over another Scuttle Crab. Let's see who's gonna be able to pick it up this time. It looks like with the Leona coming in. No, gonna force the Smite actually. Leona fairly low and will be hooked by the Nautilus, but he does not have his support. The Karthus and Sejuani deciding to go back towards the middle lane here. Karthus throwing down lay waste to get some vision. Gonna be able to try and contest it here. Not sure if he'll be able to get it though. No, it's gonna be pulled far and away out of that bush. Or into that bush, out of his range. And just barely making it out of there is Maokai. Aurelia with that ultimate gonna be able to put out quite a bit of damage onto him. Force him out of the lane here. Actually gonna hang around, doesn't want to miss this huge wave of CS in the top lane. Gonna be able to clean that up pretty well. But might get aggressive on him here and he actually does knock her into the turret range. And get a flash to try and get the kill here. The minion aggro not going to be enough to save Aurelia. Great outplay by the Maokai. Aurelia dashing in just a little bit too deep. Maokai instantly landing the CC as soon as Aurelia charged in. Fantastic play by the Maokai. Going to help him quite a bit in evening up that lane now. And he will be able to go back and pick up that uh, Catalyst the Protector here. Going to get himself a little bit extra sustain to deal with that harassment that has been poking him out so hard in lane. As we see here, the Catalyst is picked up along with a pair of boots. And Karthus going to be stunned up here. And that will be the ultimate coming out. Not going to be quite enough damage though. So Juani looking to make plays happen in the middle lane. But the ult from uh, Graves misses. And Nautilus absolutely harassing Graves down quite a bit, but here is Syndra with that support is going to be giving the kill over to Karthus. And the teleport coming in for the Maokai, going to be able to slow down that Leona. 
And she is forced to flash here. But will this be the dive? It looks like Maokai really wants it, but is team gonna think better of it here? Without the minion support, gonna just pull back, secure that dragon after creating this pressure here in the bottom lane. Fiona and Graves trying to clear out this wave as quickly as they can, but unfortunately, with five men on this dragon, that's gonna be simply too much to try and reasonably contest here, as that is gonna be the first dragon of the game going over to the blue side here. Aurelia being left alone in that top lane, gonna be able to have another minion wave coming. Malkai does not have that teleport up as he did teleport into the bottom lane, so blue side gonna just try and answer in the bottom lane. Uh, but that will be some turret aggro going on to these members, gonna force them off the turret here. Leona and Trundle gonna be enough to prevent any more damage onto that turret. We see Aurelia still hanging on the top lane, but going aggressive here in the bottom lane is that Leona Trundle again, trying to prevent people from going back here, successfully doing so as well. Syndra just peeking every now and again, trying to get some damage onto that Karthus and gonna force the jump away of Sejuani as Graves comes in, gets some auto attacks here and there, and they finally do manage to clear that pink ward out of the tri-bush. Great hook by Nautilus there, unfortunately just outside of the turret range. Not gonna be able to create too much out of that, but Nautilus definitely landing a lot of hooks this game. Gonna have to start respecting that potential CC coming out of there. As they're looking to try and clear out this turret, and that is gonna be the ultimate from Leona and with the buckshot, or excuse me, the Graves ultimate not missing this time. That should be enough with the last. No, Nautilus gonna make it out just barely alive. Here comes Karthus. Does not have that ultimate up yet, so it looks like those two blinking red members of the red side are gonna be able to make it out just barely. Circus again trying to create some damage here. Another blink, three blinking red members still, but Karth is just not quite enough time on that ultimate yet. It looks like Syndra going to be able to back just barely in time as well. It's Graves creating a little fight there in the bottom lane between the two carries, but not much going to come of it here as they both now are out of mana. Except for, of course, Sivir, who can just get that mana back when she spell shields uh, Graves' last ability there. Karthus now with the ultimate up, but again, uh, looks like it is unfortunately too late as all the members uh, are going to be just fine here, especially with the Graves recalling now. Very unfortunate timing there on the cooldown. We see the slugfest in the top lane continue. Uh, Sheen and Faith completed now for Aurelia. It's going to be very dangerous with a lot of potential burst here. And Leona, unfortunately the turret aggro did go on to Sivir. Leona going to be forced to throw down her ultimate there. And the flash immediately coming out of Aurelia respecting the possible ultimate from Sejuani. Great play there. Not even going to risk it. Might have been able to uh, hang out a little bit to try and bait out the actual ultimate itself, but gonna just play it totally safe here. As we see the style double wards coming out into that bush. As they look again to try and get control of this tri bush here. Now it's going to be forced to hop away, and that will be the Karthus ultimate coming out not gonna get too much done onto anybody though. Perhaps I mean a little bit more of a fight was breaking out in the bottom lane. Or working rather as more of a deterrent to prevent Nautilus from getting engaged on too heavily there. looking for that hook on the Graves. He's actually just going to walk forward. He does get the hook onto that Graves, but the ultimate from Graves, just simply too much burst damage here. Far too much to be dealt with right now, and that is going to be another kill onto this Graves. Now 3-0-1.
Graves absolutely looking to dominate here in this bottom lane. Trundle gonna be calling out Karthus, challenging him a little bit there with that chilling smite. So we see Sivir picking up a little extra experience for herself here as she goes back to clear out that minion wave. Right now it looks like uh, looking at the CS scores, we do have a uh, very minor advantage in the bottom lane as far as creep score is concerned. Only 10 CS lead, of course. Those three kills making up uh, the vast majority of that difference here. And Karthus getting the ultimate thrown down on him, but Sejuani coming in immediately after does miss the ultimate though, so not going to be able to get too much done onto that Syndra aside from forcing the flash there. Ultimate for a flash though, definitely worth that exchange. And uh, Karthus here, with those two kills already and the rod now completed and stacking, going to become a huge threat going forward. And there's the exhaust, going to force the flash of Trundle, but very low is that Maokai in the top lane. As we see this battle just going wild here in the bottom lane, there's going to be the teleport coming in from Aurelia just as that Nautilus goes down. And that is five members now around this dragon right as it spawns you got to think that this is going to be a dragon going over to the red side here Karthus looking to try and get a little bit more poke damage on there but that is going to be the bursting bursting from that ultimate coming out to pick up Sejuani now without that Sejuani up it's going to be nigh impossible to contest this dragon here Karthus not quite available with that ultimate just yet so Trundle is very low, actually going to be able to just uh, walk around here and avoid taking any damage to prevent that Karthus ultimate taking him up here. That is Leona going quite deep here onto this Karthus alone, but Graves going to dash in. And let's see if that ultimate is enough to get the return kill onto Leona. No, just barely. Leona making it out with just 50 hit points. Insanely close. Three blinking red members again as we do see Maokai finishing up that top lane turret to get a little bit of an answer for that dragon. Oh, but very unfortunate for that Karthus. A near triple kill, but just not going to be enough in the end. I was even thinking that Leona went a little bit too aggressive there jumping over the wall, but that Graves so fed now with four kills with that infinity edge already completed and now Aurelia power spiking really hard with her completed trinity force as well as a spectral's cow to try and be able to survive all that Malkine uh, Karthus damage as it does come out as we see of course both of them have rods of ages that are now stacking up here Karthus a little bit ahead of the game as far as the stacks are concerned but both of those are going to be hitting their uh, stacks us pretty soon as Karthus transitions into just some raw damage here with that needlessly large rod coming out. Infinity Edge of course now completed for that Sivir as well. Though she is still sitting on tier 1 boots here. It is of course Sivir so mobility probably not going to be too much of a concern as long as she has that ultimate up. We are seeing, of course, both junglers opt to go for the uh, Juggernaut enchantment for their jungle items here. Get nice and tanky as per the meta dictating. <laughs> Looks like with four members here, they're going to look to try and create a uh, kill here onto this mid lane turret. Leona going to get a beautiful ultimate onto the aggro Sivir. Not quite sure how she drew the turret aggro, but unfortunately that is going to be the kill on the Sivir, the carry to start this off. And blue side is in absolutely full retreat. And that's going to be a three for nothing. Just a little bit too far forward there, getting the turret aggro onto their carry. Going to result in uh, a devastating team fight there. That will also result in a trade of the mid lane tower. And possibly Karthus going down as well. Yes, that will be the Karthus dying here. Ultimate not available either, so charging into this is Maokai to try and get those people nice and low, but unfortunately, uh, no ultimate to follow up with there. 
And that's gonna be the low members just for recalling and, and an extended ace there for nothing. Going over to the red side as we see that gold advantage spiking now. Nearly six and a half K gold lead for the red side. And picking up that blue buff as well. Syndra, of course, just gonna make sure nothing happens there. Gonna pick up her friend, throw him aside a little bit. So we're gonna actually have to ult away from... No, gonna flash, gonna be able to dodge that Syndra. And with the Karthus ultimate, that will be enough. And all of a sudden, Red Side got a little bit too aggressive here. That should be... No, not gonna go down. No, the Nautilus will be able to slow him down. And with the flash, Sejuani not quite gonna be able. That is the pop of the Cutlass. And with Leona, the peel just a little too strong here. Not going to be able to get the kill. But they will be able to rotate right back down here and finally finish off that mid lane turret. Get a little bit of that global, global gold for themselves. So we do see two, uh, the dragon now spawning in under two minutes. We see the blue side cruising on down past that dragon to try and throw down some wards here. A little bit of preparation. Unfortunately, the red side going to be able to challenge that setup with Graves here as well. Sejuani doesn't want to take this. That is the ultimate thrown out already from Graves. So much damage onto that tanky Sejuani. Even with that uh, Cinder Hulk enchantment, excuse me, not Juggernaut, Cinder Hulk, uh, and the Righteous Goal already now completed, that is just not enough resistance. The raw health just being obliterated by that really fed Graves here. Again, 4-0 and 3 now. Graves just becoming a nightmare. As we see Maokai doing his best to defend this top lane, but with Graves rotating up now, uh, they might just have to give up this top lane here. So we're gonna look to try to create some pressure to answer in the bottom lane, but Trundle just in the jungle for blue side. I believe he was pinged out. They do know he's there. Gonna think better of it and just gonna recall uh, as they don't know where that Syndra is as she's just now showing herself on the map. But that will be Trundle getting the red buff counter jungle the way here. I'm gonna walk right through uh, the members here. Good pillar to slow him down. He's gonna make it out just fine. Here we go, the slugfest continues in the top lane. Gonna actually be trading back and forth here. A little early pop on that ultimate there. Not gonna block out as much damage uh, from the return shots. Still gonna be doing quite all right. As we see going way deep is that Nautilus who's gonna be forced to flash back out. And that will be a great ultimate from Sejuani, but not going to be enough, unfortunately. All five members there, going to be simply too much. And that is a pause coming through here. Unfortunately, the uh, 4v5 there, so you see some connection problems happening for so we're going to just DC and uh, reconnect here momentarily. But yeah, unfortunately, that Karthus... Uh, was right in the middle of people as they were leaving, but not going to be able to get anybody low enough to finish him off with the ultimate here. So that will be uh, two for zero over to the red side again. Now, extending their gold lead to over 7k at this point in the game. Only two turrets ahead, but 11 kills, especially when they're on to Aurelia and Graves almost entirely here for the red side, making up 11 of those 17 kills. Those are not the people you want to be giving kills over to if you're this blue side here. Uh, Aurelia, now that she's transitioning into those tank items, is just going to get harder and harder to kill at this point in the game. And Graves uh, does have the little extra uh, protection here of some movement speed from the Phantom Dancer, of the Locket of the Iron Solari from that Leona. Uh, going to be able to survived just fine and that looks to be the second dragon of the game for this red side 
third dragon of the game, uh, but second dragon for the red team here. Going to be uncontestable, of course. So, Juani, not going to try to be a hero there. You see, uh, Karthus does now have his death cap completed here. We'll be able to do quite a bit of damage now that the Rod of Ages is stacked for him. As we see pink wards starting to come out for this blue side, they absolutely got to start uh, throwing down those pink wards to set up some semblance of, uh, of uh, mini objectives here uh, to control and defend within their jungle. Certainly not spotty on the warding right now, just no permanent pink wards on the map currently. Needs to get those thrown up and uh, try and extend uh, their territory here back into their own jungle. As of course we had just seen uh, Sejuani just now finally clearing her red buff after it was just easily sauntered into and taken by that trundle. They've got to set up some permanent vision here to prevent stuff like that from occurring. As those turrets have fallen quite a bit, uh, they've seeded a lot of territories. We see Sivir throwing down uh, Pink Ward herself a little bit more defensively in that bottom side as they're missing quite a bit. And that's going to be an insane amount of burst being thrown down onto that Karthus. Trundle going to get him with the pillar in the end, but that will be Syndra going down. And the ultimate from Karthus actually possibly baiting that Sivir a little bit too far forward here. But with all the members of the red side now gathered and a beautiful ultimate from Leona, that will be the tank going down a great parting ultimate from Sejuani, but unfortunately just too late. I see pings coming out onto that Baron. Going to be looking to take it here. No smite available currently for that Trundle, though it should be up momentarily. This Trundle taken quite low almost immediately, though. Going to be relegated to running interference here. No, going to get hooked by the Nautilus. And there's just not quite enough damage coming out from a Maokai and Nautilus, although Graves is so low here. If they could just find him, they'd be able to get the kill for sure, but unfortunately, Graves back far and away. So that will be enough interference to prevent that Baron from going down here. We'll draw the game out a little bit longer for this blue side. Give them a little bit more time to try and recover here. So Juana going to be picking up that monster wave in the bottom lane. Now, as we mentioned in the champ select process, that Sejuani, that Nautilus, the Maokai, there's a lot of very strong CC uh, that should be able to create quite a... Uh, a good pick opportunity here for this blue side if they can just find uh, some members caught out here. Morelia has been one to split push quite a bit. And it looks like they're going to try and create a pick here with that Maokai and the Karthus, but she's going to back away. With that Banshee's Veil coming out as well, it's going to be a little tricky to get her uh, as one of the targets, but unfortunately with that 6, 2, and 4 stats on her, she has become one of the forces to be reckoned with in this game. As we see now, the Ludens Echo is completed here for that Syndra. And there is some uh, damage coming out onto that Fiora, though she does, or er, excuse me, not Fiora. Can, can you tell I like uh, the Fioras? I, I miss I miss seeing Fioras. <laughs> the Aurelia. Uh, just too tanky at this point in time for two AP members of the blue side to do much by way of damage here. Now will be a beautiful ultimate there from Graves. Gonna be able to clean up that Syndra, no problem. And lots of turret shots coming in onto this red side, but unfortunately not going to be enough. Sejuani, beautiful ultimate as well, but the team follow-up just was not there. And with that, that is going to be a lot of members here in this red side. Still healthy enough to siege up this turret, 
Will Maokai, or will Nautilus be able to defend along with Karthus here? It looks like they're gonna, again, get some good turret aggro onto the red side, but it's just not gonna be enough here as they are juggling the turret aggro. No, that will be Graves going down here. And it looks like that ultimate gonna be channeled from Karthus. No, it's not gonna pick up any kills. Both that Leona, so low. The Trundle, so low. I can't believe how many times this game that Karthus has come so close to picking up some kills with that ultimate and just left the red side with blinky and red health bars. So unfortunate. I mean, just imagine if that Karthus had two or three more kills under his belt right now. This would be an entirely different game here. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case for this blue side. As we see, taking this opportunity where everyone did go back after that fight to try and get some deeper wards thrown down here, possibly catch some people out in their jungle here, create some picks, and if you can get a pick onto that, um, onto those carries for the red side, preferably of course the Graves, uh, as he is walking over some wards right now, gonna try and rush down the dragon quickly though, prevent that critical third dragon going over to the red side, and they will be able to do so here, as that is the ultimate pop from multiple people here <laughs> as we see uh, a lot of damage coming out onto this blue team not quite enough damage onto that graves no he will get picked up by the Karthus in the end but by the time it happens that is a full ace coming out from the red side here unfortunately just too far behind at this point in the game when you're 12 10k behind as hard as they tried to throw down the damage onto the right targets, we see, of course, Syndra so low. Graves was, and in the end, killed. It just wasn't enough, and unfortunately, that will cost them this middle lane inhibitor here. Sivir gonna be up, but not gonna be able to defend it in time. And just throw down a little poke as they saunter away here. Possibly going to be able to fish out some of those pink wards. No, Trundle actually just going to rotate up to that top lane turret with that monster wave. Try and create a little extra damage onto this turret as well, but not going to be able to do so as those two members are going to come over and clean up that wave. No problem here for the blue side. Trundle is going to be looking to pick up that scuttle crab, get that speed shrine up. Uh, here's Karthus though, throwing down that ward. Gonna be a little dangerous there, but luckily for him, gonna be able to walk out of that just fine. Again, we do not want to, uh, not give proper credit here to that trundle as well. 5, 1, and 9. Been an absolute monster this game. I uh, even opted to go with that uh, Blade of the Ruin King despite getting the Cinder Hulk enchantment or his jungle item to get a little extra uh, split push threat, a little extra 1v1 potential here. I'm going to have to smite away that red buff there, but going to be certainly happy to do so. Prevent that from going on to Sivir. We see the blue side doing all they can just to defend their own jungle camps at this point. Thundle sets up that bot lane to push just a little bit and now with Aurelia split pushing in the top lane, her teleport is not available. So that's going to be, uh, well Syndra now backing up to get her blue buff right now. It was about to be a 1-3-1. Uh, with those super minions, I suppose, being a sixth man here. Still could be considered as such. Uh, but the red side gonna look to take this blue buff as well. Leona gonna be able to run interference here. Not gonna be able to be contested in the end. Total dominance of the jungle from both sides uh, over to this red team here. Now it looks like they're going to look to set up for a death crush here. Uh, they have cleared out all the vision from this red side. So Ward's going to be able to spot people out a little bit, and that's going to be the jump onto that Nautilus and uh, 
Karthus as well. The enemy going out here. They are hanging out. They have a lot of that damage from Karthus, but it's not going to be enough in the end. A few members quite low, but that's not going to be enough. The heal going to be coming out from Graves as well. Going to keep that Aurelia nice and healthy. As we see Leona trying to 1v1 the carry here with Graves in tow. Going to flash, actually. Keep the pursuit on, Graves. Dipped out a little bit, a slight miscommunication there of just how hard they were going to go. So, going to be able to make it out with her life. Excuse me, is the Sivir with the super minions pouring into the base now through that middle lane. That's going to be the top lane inner turret going to be going down. Not going to be able to contest that, just Nautilus in the area. Now Karth is here as well, looking to make something off of this. That is quite a bit of damage coming off that engage, and there is two kills going over to that Karth. That's a good ignite, or a good exhaust onto the ADC for the red side, and that's gonna be Graves going down as well. All of a sudden, blue side, or the red side, bit off a little bit more than they could chew with that turret. I even thought that they were gonna be perfectly fine uh, clearing out that turret before they could back out, and while they do get the turret, that is three members down, and that's going to be the blue side looking to start off this dragon, or excuse me, this baron, as dragon is nearing to spawn as well. Trundle does have that smite available, unfortunately no flash for him. Going to be a tricky one to contest here, but it looks like they are going to walk around and try and do it, throwing up the pillar, but not going to be enough. Anything better than actually going in is Syndra going to be able to pick up the Sivir and Trundle taking the damage from the Baron. That's going to be a full sweep for both sides, a two for two at this point, but Aurelia going to be able to fend off this Maokai. And Maokai going to just barely make it out alive. Yes, actually will be able to make it. Karthus going to be slowed down here, going to actually be stunned by that Aurelia. But here comes Nautilus trying to create as much peel as he can. Unfortunately, going to have to use the hook for himself just to get out alive. As that turret, of course, is no longer there. And that will be this inhibitor going back down. Very unfortunate for the blue side. So close to going to that Baron. To actually picking that up. That could have been a game changer there. Definitely the right plays they need to be making at this point. Need to try and be forcing... Uh, those objectives, pressing those advantages where they can get them. With the red side just able to respond perfectly. Willing to take that risk to prevent that. And now looking to pick up their third dragon here. Not going to be able to be stolen away though. Uh, the Sejuani did charge in. Waiting for that Sejuani ultimate, of course it is not available. And that will be Red Side gonna be able to clean up here. Unfortunately, those key ultimates not available. Uh, the Silver Ultimate did come out as well as the Nautilus, but the Maokai not able uh, to soak up quite enough damage there to survive. And that will be a 4 for 1 and the third dragon for this Red Side as they look to push in through this bottom lane here now. Overall a 13k lead. Leona taking quite low actually by those late waves. Gonna be forced to back right away. Perth is gonna zone her off a little bit, be a bit of a nuisance there. But Trundle's gonna clean out that pink ward. Gonna pick up this red buff for himself as well. Actually. Looking to see if he can tap somebody out. Could have done so with that Karthus, but Karthus is gonna just be able to throw down some vision. Actually caught in between the wall and the pillar. Oh no, Karthus absolutely blocked there. Can't even move. But that might have gotten uh, Trundle a little bit more cocky. Actually gonna work out for this blue side here. Trundle thinking he had uh, glitched Karthus into a position he couldn't escape from. Not actually able to pick up the kill in the end. And that will prevent the smites from being available for this red side here. 
as they do throw down plenty of vision onto that Baron. That's going to mean, though, they aren't able to actually take it themselves. Oh, it's doing his best to contest a 10 HP on the blue buff. Unfortunately, not going to go over to that Nautilus here. You see a lot of damage coming out, though probably not the fight they want to take here. Leona taking quite a bit of damage, but again, that Leona is so tanky now. With those super minions streaming into the base, trying to proxy out the next wave, give their base a little bit of breathing room here. But Trundle is back up. And with so much vision again laid down onto the Baron, it's going to be hard for this uh, blue side to try and contest this as they already had to send some numbers back just to deal with those creeps going into their base. And Leona should jump onto that Sivir. Sivir forced to flash here. She is going to be able to make it out alive just barely though. But she will be zoned out of the entire fight here. No, actually going to be jumped on even further by Aurelia. And that's going to mean more kills going over to this red side. Only the Leona going down so far. All the damage dealers still up and ready. Very aggressive flash there from the Trundle. But it will be worth it. And in the end, as Syndra going to be able to pick up the kill there as well. Karthus doing so much damage at this point in the game gonna be able to get a return kill but it's just not gonna be enough unfortunately or will it actually Sejuani gonna be able to pick up the kill onto Trundle and might be able to do so onto Aurelia as well both of them taking so low that's gonna be the triple the Sejuani damage not respected enough in this later stage here with that uh, uh, goodness gracious the thorn mail uh, completed of course doing a lot of return damage to that Graves and Aurelia, and that is going to be Hero Sejuani riding that Poro to victory for her team here. Fantastic defense, and again, as we saw, Karthus has reached that point in the late game now with that stack for Rod of Ages, with that Death Cap, with that Void Staff, with that Zonia. So much damage, so much penetration through the MR of this red side that he's going to be doing insane amounts of damage into this later stages of the game here. And now everything is up for grabs here. You see Blue Side starting off this Baron. Not going to be able to get there in time, this Trundle. It's going to be up to Leona and Syndra to try and contest this out. But unfortunately they're not going to be able to do so. And that is the Baron going over to the Blue Side here just in time. And with that, now we will see this red side having a little bit of trouble. As that is a Baron inhibitor in the middle lane for the blue side, but the Baron up minions will be able to help with that defense. And of course, I do want to take a second to point out, there was a ward dropped here in the base, but this Nexus no longer vulnerable so long as this inhibitor is up. So possibly Aurelia was looking for a backdoor opportunity there, but just not going to be available so long as they haven't repressed through that inhibitor. And it looks like they're going to choose to try and contest this dragon instead. Probably the best choice here, given that Baron buff won't be uh, affecting too much of that fight here without any minions present. Fighting the jungle is going to be the best option here for the red side. So we see that beautiful Ludin's Echo animation doing insane amounts of damage there. That is going to be a quite a bit of damage on an auto that's going to be forced to pop face of the mountain on himself, not going to block out any damage there. And that will be Maokai caught out, unfortunately they're going to be forced to engage off of that. Maokai doing his best to take down those backline carries, but Nothing going to be happening for this blue team, unfortunately, despite the carry damage not being there that whole time. Not going to be able to create any kills off the tanks themselves. And that will be Karthus' ultimate coming through. He did pick up Leona right before that kill, and that is, again, three blinking red members for Karthus. So close, so many times to gain huge kills off that ultimate, but just not quite able to do so. So Zhuani trying to be a hero again, not going to be able to defend that inhibitor. 
but will get the kill off of Trundle, and that will be Sivir actually getting the kill onto Trundle and Graves. So we're throwing up that spell shield immediately. The Baron buff gonna help to stall this out. Syndra needs to be careful. She might go down to just the minion damage here, as she is quite low. And that will be the bottom lane turret going down, having to pull that focus uh, to the middle lane here. Excuse me, that will be the top lane turret uh, going down for the blue side, actually. So the Winions creating some opportunities here for this blue side to try and come back here. The teleport coming out from this Malkai here. Since we're just going to have to continue to back far too low to try and do anything at that Baron. Or excuse me, at that dragon, as we see Shadowani coming in here as well. This should be third dragon of the game for the blue side. Evening up that dragon total here with the critical move speed buff to both teams now. All of a sudden, this looks to be anyone's game despite, again, nearly a 9k goal lead here for the red side. 20 kills in the lead. Five turrets up. Somehow, this blue side just keeps pulling it through. Karth is now almost full build here. Dishing out immense amounts of damage. So certainly, the Syndra, nothing to sneeze at it either, as she picked up just another uh, needlessly large rod. Gonna be going into that Zonia's Hourglass. We have the Graves now full build here. Uh, with that, with those boots, still possible to sell those boots in exchange for uh, another item, but I'm gonna opt not to here. Gonna keep those boots at least for the time being. I do believe, yeah, he just simply does not have the money to do so at this point. But nearly full build here is this Graves. As Sivir, uh, nearly full build herself, does have uh, this uh, Quicksilver Sash built here so she's going to be able to try and survive that with that spell shield with that QSS to uh, get through here all these strong amounts of engage and Karthus of course with his Zonia's Hourglass as well going to be able to dodge out of quite a bit of damage now with that Baron buff expired here and say hard defense for this blue side there are doing quite a good job of just lighting up the map with their their wards to make sure they are not cut out in their own jungle as red side tries to impede that <laughs> with their own warding as well we see a very good depiction of where the line of scrimmage has sort of been drawn around what would be the uh, inner turret area for this blue side which again just very impressive play from this blue side Good game sense there. Uh, spotting out that Leona who's hiding in the death brush there. Now we'll be Malkai coming down to regroup with his team here. And again, with so many items completed here, that gold difference meaning less and less for this red side. And we can easily see a fight going either team's way here. The super minion is going to be pushing up the middle lane here. All determines on what sort of engagement we see in this bottom lane and how long this red side does try and stall it out to let those super minions just naturally push in the middle lane. Baron coming up in 45 seconds though. Might be looking to fall back here, throw some wards down and regroup around that Baron. Try and force another uh, fight outside of the base here, give those minions even more time to group together and push up that middle lane. Some risky poking forward here from this blue side, doing everything they can to try and get some vision of their own around this Baron. Looks like they actually will be able to take the crab for themselves here. Going to be very helpful uh, having that speed shrine available in addition to just the uh, irremovable vision of course. Going to definitely know what's up as that 
Baron is now live, but unfortunately for the red side, that blue inhibitor did just respawn, so no more are there going to be super minions streaming into the base for the red side. It's just going to be a normal push here. And there's a Sivir ultimate engaging. The hook does miss from Nautilus here, but Karthus doing quite a bit of damage onto those two members. Aurelia taking quite low already, and she will be going down the first casualty of the fight here along with Leona and all of a sudden blue side catching out the members they needed to and that will be Graves going down as well a four for nothing as Trundle too late to the party here gonna be doing his best to fight underneath that turret but taking so low gonna be forced to back out and that will be again a four for one only the Sejuani going down for the blue side fantastic play there so impressed by this comeback in this game for this blue side. Absolutely great team fighting in these later engages here. Despite being so far behind, they absolutely put the members in the front they needed. They split up the blue team as well as they could. Great teleport back in there to give those minions a little bit of extra time. Unfortunately, Karth is going to be the one who's targeted down by both minion or by both uh, turrets here from the Nexus, but. That's going to be one Nexus turret going down, another Nexus turret going down. I don't think Aurelia is going to be able to spawn in time to even contest this. No, that's going to be the game going over to the blue side despite being at a 10k gold deficit for so long in the game. Absolutely fantastic comeback play there from this blue side. I am so thoroughly impressed by this team here. The Kabam team absolutely mounting a very strong comeback. I Multiple times throughout the game I was asking myself what could they do and it just had to be create those picks, get those good team fights and they were absolutely able to stall out the game as long as they needed. As we look at the items here, Silver, Sivir almost full build. Full build on the Sejuani. Full build on the Karthus. Nautilus nearly full build himself. Maokai, full build. Uh, well, not quite. There was one slot there that he was buying wards on, but aside from that, I mean, that's... If you get late enough in the game to where that gold difference doesn't matter anymore, that so many of the key people already getting full build on your team, and the blues, the red side capped out full build here uh, nearly on this Syndra. Full build on that Aurelia. Full build on the Graves already. They've been capped out so long the game just got easier in the late game. And when we're speaking about a late game game, <laughs> the Sejuani so tanky with that Cinder Hulk and all these health items built. So much resistance is onto that Sejuani. The Sejuani being the only one who went down in that last fight gives you an idea of how much damage had to be burned onto that Sejuani in that final fight just to take her out and that is not the target you want to be focusing down at this stage in the game. Fantastic play. Looking at the uh, damage scores here we really see Karthus absolutely showing why he is such a threat if you can get to that late game. Those ultimates doing absurd amounts of damage to the entire team on the red side. So close throughout the game so many times to getting those kills uh, but even without getting those last hits onto those, like, I think it was probably around seven kills that he missed just by the skin of his teeth, still able to do so much damage throughout the game, still able to complete his build there, and with the uh, Abyssal Scepter was able to do so much damage in that last fight. The AoE magic shredding, uh, magic resist shredding of that item absolutely made Karthus a monster and was able to just annihilate that last fight. Fantastic play from this blue side. Unfortunately, the LinkedIn team on the red side not able to close the game out despite having a definitive lead ever since the mid game, but again, sometimes that is just the way the ball bounces and you get to the late game and all of a sudden there's a Karthus on the other team. <laughs> so fantastic play from both teams here. Uh, that will again be Kabam on the blue side picking up the win for their team. Just a fantastic game. I'm <laughs> tripping over my words of how impressed I was by that game. And if you want to uh, stay in touch with any of these games for these teams, the schedules will of course be posted to uh, 
this beautiful website on your screen now, AfterHoursGaming.tv. All the game, all the upcoming scheduled games will be posted there. Uh, all the streams, uh, streamed, streamed matches will have the streamed videos uploaded to that site as well. And if you want to stay tuned to this channel, of course, all the games that are streamed here live every Sunday uh, will be uh, available on this channel. Also uploaded afterwards, uh, so you can view those videos here as well. And thank you for watching. I hope you guys had a good time, and uh, we will see you for the next game later on today.